And they could, I mean, there were so many things they could do. And Tom had done them all as kids, uh, when he was a kid. So he could teach them fishing and skiing and snowmobiling and uh, everything that you can do in a countryside like this. And then he fell in love with horses, so that it, they did too. Yeah. And um, I guess that's pretty much what brought us here and what kept us here. Yeah. It's, it's just an incredible place. <laughs> we kind of like uh, hunting and fishing, and uh, it offered that. We weren't much uh, for golf. <laughs> we, th <laughs> we thought we'd pick it up and learn when we got here, but uh, it never really took because we were never much of any good at it. Well, he had three shoulder, sh shoulder surgeries, and I was really bad. We did try once, and my score at the end of the fourth hole was 78. <laughs> And my arms were so tired, I thought I'd never, I'd never be able to move them again. And so I said, can we please go home? And I was like, ah, yeah, it's a good idea. <laughs> you know, so we never, we really, I think we tried it one other time and it was almost as bad. So we watch and that's fun. And we have golf tournament fundraisers for the church. So that's, that's it too. But you know, also Kayla, we looked all around, you know, as we were in the military, we went and Tom loves skiing. He skied all over Europe, he skied everywhere in his career and so um, but on retirement from the military there weren't very many places that we'd found that we could afford to live really close enough to enjoy going back and forth and this when we first came here um, 40 or so years ago it was like a thousand dollars an acre and when we moved here 23 years ago but a little over it was about three thousand an acre now it's like 10 and up, but it was a place that we could afford to do what we wanted to do, you know, and we really wanted something. We grew up in the era where cowboys and Indians on the movies and television were really the heroes, mm -hmm. and you saw the beautiful country, and this was it. In fact, they filmed Lonesome Dove right here. I mean, this, the buildings here that we live in were blocked out, but lo this is Montana, according to Lonesome right. Dove. And it took it from down at the other end of the valley, looking up here. Mm -hmm. And um, we wanted the kids to know, you know, land was disappearing so much in this country. Mm -hmm. And we wanted the kids to know what it was like, kind of, when we were growing up. And we wanted grandchildren to know and so we bought 40 acres about nine miles from here and then because there was no power out there when we by the time we were able to retire got the kids through college could retire um, we bought this place thinking we'd be here one to three years and here we are <laughs> we're still here but it's been it was affordable and that I think uh, you know if you and it's family type skiing the, uh, Which I think is different. The uh, family membership dues at that time were twenty-five dollars a year. Yeah. <laughs> for all of the amenities. Wow. Yeah. So uh, we took great advantage of that. That was very affordable. <laughs> for four kids, <laughs> getting them uh, taught how to ski and. Uh, mm -hmm. um, so they, they all learned to ski. They all learned to ski here, and we've got thirteen grandchildren and twelve of them have skied here. Most of them have learned here. Mm -hmm. Twelve have skied here. We've got one that'll be four in January and he just hasn't been here the last two years mm -hmm. in the winter time to be able to ski. Three but of, hopefully. Three of our uh, daughters worked for the resort uh, uh, in their younger days whether they were in college or before yeah. college. Uh, two of them are certified ski instructors here. And and one was a hostess, hostess at the at country club. At the so, old country club. And we've had a grandson came out and worked last summer here. And, um, you know, I mean, it's just, it's family. In fact, I think our four daughters think we're getting kind of old because they're getting worried that we might have to move someplace else or something. And we've said a couple things about, you know, what will we do if we need, you know, different type of medical care or something. And we're really healthy yet, so we're blessed. But, you know, the grandkids in the last year of all of them have been saying, Dad, yeah, Papa, you can't sell the ranch. You've got to stay in Angel Fire. Angel Fire's home. 
And that's amazing because one of our daughters, uh, her husband was in the military, in the Navy, mm -hmm. and they have six children. And yet they've been here so often between the moves and everything that they really, this is home to them. And part of the home really is like for kids. We've got a loft that have all their Legos and books and everything. We've got um, a cubby hole downstairs that have all the little toys for all the little kids. I mean, it's like a home. And they, you know, I said to Tom, well, I don't know, but I don't think we can leave. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, they really, I mean, they really, really feel that this is the this is the place they've heard about all their life and this is where they this is home when they come here it's like okay we're home we we're also so uh, very involved uh, in the church when we first came here uh, uh, we went to uh, St. Mel's over in Eagle Nest and uh, found a very welcoming family there that uh, uh, we did a lot of things yeah. with. And, it was uh, like 30 years, and every time we came, they remembered us, probably because of the four girls, mm -hmm. you know, because they mm -hmm. saw them from little tiny tots to growing up. But they always, it was like they were part of the valley, and it, it, that was what we found here. The people remembered, and they welcomed you. They, you know, they shared. And, and I thought that, that was neat. Today. Yeah. Pretty much. It so, really yeah. is. You get a little more sophistication now. Um, we were, uh, we were oh. glad uh, to uh, be able to finally get a church on the ground, Catholic Church, an angel fire, uh, which took quite a few years of, of doing, but uh, it was built primarily to accommodate our visitors. We don't have that big of a full-time, round-a-year uh, community here now. You know, it's pretty, pretty quiet down now. And uh, the pews aren't filled, but... Uh, before the downturn in the economy, this was the fastest growing area in New Mexico for several years. Mm -hmm. And that's why there was, they kept track of the visitors' numbers coming in. Mm -hmm. And um, in our church, that's why they, the archbishop said he wanted a church here for the people uh, so that they could go to service when they were here. And now it's a little bit slower. The house, you know, we've got a lot of houses on the market and everything. But I think it will come back. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, there are a lot of factors that have kept it down. But we were the last part of the country to go down. And I think maybe we're going to be the last to come back up. But, mm -hmm. uh, but it's still, a, it's got more positives than negatives. We own the um, condos, then the lift condos. We had Condo number one, which is right across from the uh, from the main ski lift. On the end, end condo. There. End condo. So, so we could, uh, we always came up at Christmas with the family, and we could uh, put our skis on at the condo and ski right down to the lift. We were here when the organizational part of the resort wasn't real tight and real organized, mm -hmm. and they had a lot of young teenagers, I mean, well, 15, 17 year olds that were ski instructors, and most of them were boys. Mm -hmm. So when we started coming up with girls, they would each, they could go to the head of the line if they were instructing someone, and no one ever checked to see if they were an actual client or not. And so the kids would ski all day, and we usually had a living room full of kids camped at night sleeping <laughs> uh, cooked a lot because <laughs> they would take their breaks and come yeah. to the condo and and you could see all the activities you could see everything going on and you could recognize if you knew your skiers you could recognize them coming down the hill mm -hmm. and it was uh, but it was a little more loosey-goosey mm -hmm. and then they uh, when it got started getting more crowds they actually, the resort was really cool. They uh, served hot chocolate and cookies, mm -hmm. and they'd have kids dress up in um, cartoon costumes or something, and they would have song fests to keep the lines from getting upset or anger, you know, they'd keep them calmed down. That's when the only thing they had open was uh, the bump exhibition. Sometimes yeah, before they, they changed everything. Yeah. And that was actually not that long ago. Most of the things that have really changed have been in the last 15 to 20 years. Mm -hmm. I mean, the big changes. Yeah. 
up until then, it, uh, the whole time from the, when it had started was, I mean, it was kind of, I wouldn't say crude, but it was the bare necessities. How about that? And um, the didn't, people loved it. Didn't have the hotel there at that time. Mm -hmm. They had, uh, oh, uh, I don't know what you call it, uh, the lower warming house, I guess, was there. Had a big open fire pit in the middle of it. It was kind of neat. And you, do you know that the do that they had a bear in the hotel? Yeah, the, that's yeah, why they, that's why they have the doors that are there They're different. There. Yeah. yeah. Gosh. And uh, I was trying to, we stayed in the first, um, what was it called? Angel Starfire, Starfire Lodge. Lodge, the first lodge they built here. We stayed in it, and the first room we stayed in had never been used before. Wow. And um, that was, I remember the mountain was just open, you know, mm -hmm. just open. And we came up in the summer so we could hike. Unfortunately, we brought a new dog that was an Afghan hound. And they're rather untrainable, but we didn't know that at the time. <laughs> and so the, it got loose, and Tom and the kids chased it up and down the mountainside. And then we had a real problem because it rolled in elk dung, and it ate some. <laughs> Ugh, it was so gross. We had no place in town to get it. We couldn't, no car wars, no anything yeah. to get it clean. So we had to sneak it into the, and I mean that, into the bathroom that we had. And I will admit that three of the girls and I bailed, and Tom and one daughter cleaned the dog. And then we were able to buy supplies to sterilize the tub. Uh, and, but it was, it was really bad. <laughs> and it was... Uh, that was a weekend we used to say that uh, we'd rather not ever remember it again. And how we ever decided to live here full time after that weekend was a miracle. <laughs> you just have to tell you that on the funny side. That was our Listen. free weekend, our first weekend at uh, Angel Fire. Don uh, was promoting he'd give you a free weekend uh, stay mm -hmm. in. Uh, at the Starfire. <laughs> and it was, and they didn't allow pets, but we didn't know that. So we thought we'd be able to keep her in the car and just take her walks and everything, but it, we did. It was really bad. <laughs> uh, it was nice to add a swimming pool there too at the Starfires. Oh, really? Probably yeah. now. Those are yeah. those are condos now, right? They tore it down oh. a there's, couple years ago. There's nothing there. It's kind of a pad. Looks like they've got campsites set up there. Oh, yeah. Just as you start up the hill on the right side. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah they Behind took it those out. condos, yeah. We felt so sad when they took it out because yeah. that was. Memories right yeah. <laughs> but it was really cool. 